Hello folks, Crazy Camper here once again to do Alone Season 3, Episode 3 review of Into the Darkness. Now, I think they might have called Into the Darkness because of Fowler. But first of all, I am by no means a survival expert. I just love to camp, different forms of camping, whether it's backcountry or car camping. And I'm a big fan of this show too. So please subscribe to me, that crazy camper up there, click. And my other camping channel where I just document my trips right there in the wonderful province of Ontario. So, episode 3. We're into day 12 already, so I'm impressed that's going by pretty quick. But let's just jump straight into the rankings. Number 8, Carly Fairchild. So we first see her. Greg Evans, number 7. Dan Willock, number 6. And we first see him too, this episode. Number 5, Dave Nessa, number 4. Megan Hennick, number three, Britt Nahar, number two, Callie North, and number one, I'm leaving in Zachary Fowler. So as always, why did I do this? Let's take a look. Number eight, Carly Fairchild. We take a look at what she brought. Standard items. She brought two rations. She brought a water canister, 64 ounce metal water bottle. So that is different. She didn't bring cordage. I guess she figures you make her own cordage out there with bamboo. That might make some sense. And she went to wilderness survival school and she's kind of a jack of all trades where she's very well rounded in many professions she works in, which might help her out in the bush. But we first see her on day 11. So again, like the last episode I mentioned, what have people been doing all these days that History Channel doesn't show? But she was the last contestant we met. And she started off building a shelter. I liked how she had an inner wall, or two, two outer walls, so inside she could put insulation. I thought she had built a really warm shelter there. And then of course it collapsed in. I don't know why she didn't use her, I think everyone was issued one tarp, she could have used that to go around the top, kind of like a teepee, and that would have added some structure and kept in more moisture, but it all caved in on her. And she seemed pretty upset after that, missing home. I don't know what she's been eating or what she's been doing, but I had to put her to be tapped out next because of those reasons. Moving on to number seven, I put Greg Ovens in there. Now, we don't see him this episode, but we know in episode two, which must have been around day nine, he got lost. I'm going to guess he makes his way back, but I think he's already complaining about food. And then I think an animal gets caught, or no, a fox starts taking food from his traps. So we'll see if he can solve that next episode. But number six, Dan Woolock. First time we see him. Seems like a mentally really tough guy that wants to stay there forever until he has to be dragged out of there by the medical crew. But what did he bring that might differ from our other contestants? So minus 20 sleeping bag. He brought a hammock. Paracord. Yeah, a lot of the one food ration. A lot of these don't really change different from contestant. But he's a trapper now. As a living, he lost a job, so his, his income is, does he sell the meat or eat the meat? But he's at least selling all the furs, I know that for sure. Because that's what they do, obviously. But yeah, we first see him the morning of day 10. He really needs this money. He's a wife and kids at home too, so this is going to motivate him more. He starts chopping down a tree, and he explains to us that it is much more tiring than it really should be from what he's compared to at home. Because of lack of calories. So calories are already really starting to hurt him. And he was pretty fortunate he said to get that fish. But he had to go into the cold water to burn more calories to get. But he said his lines haven't been producing. And he's frustrated they're always tangled. So I don't think he's eating very well. And he even mentioned himself that a guy of his own size he needs a lot of calories. And he had mentioned at some point, must have been the camera, because they said that the last five days he figured he's only had about 3,000 calories. In. And... Yeah, he's going to be hurting soon if he doesn't get any food into him. Day 12, he's missing yeah, coffee and he's complaining about food, hunger. 
but he's still determined. So we'll see how long he keeps going. In number five, I'll put Dave Nessa. Again, we don't see him this episode, but we do know for a fact that he sticks around for a long time because in the promos, we'll see him losing all this weight. And the medical crew's checking him out. So I think he's going to be real stubborn hang on to like day 40 maybe. But then he falls down at that one precursor scene they show at the start of episode 2. So I don't know what that's all about, but I hope to see him next episode. Number 4, Megan Hennick. We just see her in her shelter the one night and looks like there's wild war crashing around. Now that alone, did they actually add in the sound, that growling sound? I think they might have. But either way, there was still scat about 10 feet away from her shelter. So that's a reason to be concerned because the show mentions that they do have mating season and the males are more aggressive. I see she builds a fence around her shelter, which I think is a really smart idea. I've seen survival instructors, experts do this in Africa to help ward off the big cats. But we don't know what she's eating and what she's really doing with her time recently. She's the one that had set the, the fish traps, but she hasn't gone to check them out. Number three, Brett Ahar. So I this is the best we've seen of him. He seems really good spirits. He hasn't complained about anything yet. And he's catching lots of rainbow trout. And he actually caught that one each on the water and it's working beautifully for him. And he caught so many fish, he ended up having to preserve some in a pool of water that he weaved down with some bamboo so the fish won't float away or predators might not get at them. We had mentioned something about keeping them alive and fresh, but I don't think they're alive. Maybe just meant not rotting. So that led me to think Vancouver Island. I remember when Mike found that big plastic drum that he uses a boat. You could use that as a fish tag to keep the fish alive in there. The only problem is here in Patagonia, you're not getting all the beach garbage. So could he construct some sort of pool of water somehow or a fish trap? Maybe out of, out of bamboo to keep the fish alive at the same time? while they're in the water instead of killing them right away because they will keep nailing fish but also would he want to keep taking every fish he can get because eventually he might fish that area clean so I don't know but then again we see in episode 4 he's complaining that he's being forced to be a vegetarian so I don't know how long this fish is going to keep last it might not last very much longer number 2 Kelly Norris I had to move her in to number 2 because number one, she hasn't complained about food yet. And two, she's built an amazing shelter. Now her shelter is a little big. So in the wind, that might heat might be stripped away from her a little e easier than it would be if it was smaller. But it looks pretty strong. And she's got the fire in there and everything. So I think she's set up immensely. That seems to really be driving her on. She's built a nice home for herself. And yeah, the fact she hasn't complained about food yet by day 12 means that she might be eating off camera that they're not showing or she's just eating her ration she brought because the ration's going to last you quite a while. But on number one, Zachary Fowler. So day 11, he realizes that he's on the wrong side of the lake for the sun. And then he works on his shelter, or the trail to his new shelter. And 100 feet up, it is warmer up there at night, but that's still going to take a lot of calories walking back and forth. But I see he built a great, he grade leveled the path and built a fence which is also retaining one. Now is that a waste of energy? Maybe in the short term but in the long term if you're really sluggish or lethargic from lack of calories and you might slip easier especially when it snows maybe that could save him in the future. But day 13 he breaks down because he doesn't have the sun and I could see it's, it's damp, it's cold, the sun's nice and warm and has the benefits, the health benefits of it not just mentally but physically. So I wonder could he actually move his shelter to the other side of the lake and get that direct northern exposure of sunlight in the southern hemisphere there. Sure, it'd be short-term calorie loss, but in the long term, it could pay off. Like, Larry is moving around a whole heck of a lot in season two. But I think he's still in it for the long haul. I found his YouTube channel. I can post some links in the description of people's bios, YouTube channels, and blogs. And there was a huge gap of, like, six months. They didn't post any YouTube videos in... So he obviously posted before he left them when he got back at some point. Not that he was gone six months. Maybe there's a media ban. But either way, the, after that window, he was really skinny. He looked like a different person. So I think he'll be sticking around for a long time to come. But we'll see what happens for episode four. 
I hope you're all having a wonderful Christmas, New Year's break like I am myself. And please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week for the next review or later this week. We'll see how fast I can get out with Christmas being gone and have more time on my hands. But thank you. Goodbye.